um, show you the syllabus. All right, let me enlarge the screen a little bit if I can. Yeah, I can. All right, so uh, I think this is similar to what you see in your handbook, right? Um, so basically, to take this course, you need to pass a prerequisite course, which is BGEC 3314, I believe it's a digital signal processing, right? And, uh, and then for your um, course content, all right, this, um, this one actually show you uh, the, the amount of, the number of hours I will spend on uh, each topic, okay? And also, uh, we have a guided learning time, which is uh, meaning uh, this, this will be the time I will spend on lecture and tutorial and practical and so on together with you. And then we have a non-face-to-face, -face, uh, which is called in independent uh, learning time. So for this independent learning time, uh, I actually, uh, the number of hours that you need to put in on your own, all right? in order to do well, or maybe some for some people in order to pass this course, all right? So this course, uh, as far as this course is concerned, uh, if you just, um, if you expect that you can pass by only attending lecture and tutorial and practical, uh, then um, that, that might be not that easy. Uh. So what I mean is, uh, in addition to uh, the number of hours that I spend with you online, you actually need to spend some time on your own yeah, to do revision uh, as well as to do preparation. Um, so as far as the topic is concerned, all right, let's say the first topic, the uh, first two topics, which is an introduction uh, to communication system and also uh, do some uh, fundamental uh, do some recap on the fundamental signal processing theory. I uh, will spend six hours with you on lecture. Okay, I only spend a half an hour on tutorial. And then um, I expect you to spend another three hours on your own, all right, to go through the lecture notes, yeah. And then for analog communication, uh, I will spend about 10 hours on a lecture, all right, explaining the theory and concepts uh, of these three analog modulation techniques. And uh, we'll do a two hour practical on this topic. Yeah. And uh, in, in addition to these 12 hours that we spend on this topic, I expect you to spend uh, six hours on your own to do revision on the lecture notes. All right. And then uh, to prepare yourself for the practical session, I expect you to spend another uh, two hour on your own. All right, to prepare yourself for the practical. So don't come into practical uh, unprepared because if you attend the practical session unprepared, you won't be able to do anything in these two hours. All right, that's why I actually allocate two hours here for you to do some uh, preparation on your own. Um, then uh, again, um, for Tutorial, tutorial wise, um, I will we'll have a 2.5 hour tutorial, right, on the application of uh, this analog uh, communication uh, techniques. Then uh, five hours on lecture, 2.5 hour on tutorial. So uh, in addition to this, you need to spend at least four hour to, to go through the lecture notes on your own. All right, could be before the lecture or could be after the lecture, I leave it to you. And, uh, and then for tutorial, I expect you to spend a 1.5 hour on your own, all right? Again, this could be before or could be after. But uh, again, if you spend some time before uh, to prepare yourself, that will be more beneficial uh, in my opinion. Okay, so I will go through the, the entire list. So I just want to explain what this means and uh, my, ex my expectation on your on your side uh, to do a bit of uh, homework before the class as well as uh, after the class. Okay, and uh, and then we're going to have uh, two assessment. All right, first one is the test. The second one is the assignment. So again, uh, test, I expect you, uh, in addition to all the preparation uh, up there, I expect you to spend uh, at least uh, maybe about five hours to prepare for your test. And assignment also, I expect you to uh, spend about five hours on it. 
All right, this five hours uh, is, is, I believe is adequate, uh, provided you have done your uh, preparation for your practical. All right, and you actually learn from your, during the practical session. Okay, this, this is a plan. Um, and uh, what else? All right, as far as uh, coursework is concerned, okay, I actually put up a, a plan here. All right, so uh, yes, which uh, for a total of 100 marks in your coursework, 50 marks actually will go to your test. And the test, oh no, I have a, sorry, I have a typing error here. Uh, test actually will cover analog modulation. Uh, this will be conducted in week seven. And then the assignment will be on uh, digital modulation. And this one uh, you need to submit in week 12. All right, again, this will take up 50% uh, of your coursework mark. Um, okay, so let's move into. All right, any, any questions here before I move into lecture? Okay. If you have any question, uh, you can always on your mic and speak up uh, because I might not be aware if you just put in your chat box. So if you keep quiet, then I suppose uh, no question. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to uh, lecture notes. So I, you should be able to see the uh, lecture notes in the lecture notes folder uh, in Google Classroom. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yeah. All right, so again, a uh, title of- I can see half only. Can see half. Uh. Okay, let me share again. Um, okay. Can see all? Uh, no, see nothing. Eh? Okay, so let me see. Yeah. Yeah, now we can see. Okay. Thank yeah, thank you. Okay, so this course uh, again is called uh, communication system principle. So the uh, what we need to learn in this uh, course basically is um, some basic communication systems, all right, and the and the working principles of it. Um, so the learning outcome of this course, this one also actually is shown in your uh, course content in your student handbook, but uh, I actually copied over here and to explain to you. All right, so there are three major learning outcomes in this course. So the first one is uh, you need to explain, all right, uh, when we have uh, studied this course, you need to be able to explain all right, the building blocks and working principles of analog and digital communication systems. So uh, because this is a year three course, so uh, the, the amount of uh, details that you need in the explanation will be quite, uh, um, quite a lot, all right? So therefore, it's not a level two explanation. Yeah, it's more of a level four explanation. 
So meaning you need to know the uh, working principle of this uh, analog and communications on digital communications in in quite a lot of uh, details, All right? And uh, second learning outcome is uh, knowing it is not enough. You need to be able to apply them, all right? Apply uh, suitable modulation schemes uh, and also transmission techniques, all right, uh, for various applications. So depending on the applications required, uh, you may have to choose uh, the type of uh, scheme that is suitable for it, all right? So, and then after you have chosen, you need to be able to apply them. Yeah, so this is your second learning outcome. Again, this is a level four uh, learning outcome. And then the third one, which is uh, to inv investigate uh, suitable techniques to be used in communication system using computer uh, aided analysis tool. So this third learning outcome will require you to use uh, um, simulation tool. All right. The tool we are going to use is the simulating in MATLAB. All right, so I know that uh, now for this sem we are going to we, we need to conduct our course online, so the practical session will be online as well. Yeah, and uh, for MATLAB, uh, to use MATLAB, uh, there are two uh, options. Okay, the legal options, which is the uh, first one, uh, you are going to use the evaluation uh, version of MATLAB. All right, and then. Uh, then you download it onto your laptop and then you, you, you run it from there. And then the second version will be use the online MATLAB. All right. Um, I think the download one you have about 40, 45 days uh, uh, duration to actually use it. Okay, you have that window. For online, you only have, uh, I actually did a check for online version, meaning you don't have to download it into your laptop. You can actually run in the MATLAB uh, online platform. That one is uh, 30 days. All right. So um, do not, do not uh, activate it now. Okay. You activate them, uh, whether it's the uh, uh, evaluation version or the online version, you only activate it uh, just before our practical session. All right. Um, so we're going to use that one uh, to do some invest investigation on the suitable techniques to be used. All right. And uh, this will be your assignment. All right. So uh, how I measure that you are able to uh, fulfill these three learning outcomes. The first two learning outcomes will be tested uh, through your coursework. Uh, so basically, the first two will be on your test. All right, I will actually uh, evaluate or check your understanding based on the test. Okay, these two will be on test and also exam. I'll test you on this. And then the last one basically will be on your assignment. All right um assignment will also test you a bit on your application here also because you need to design a design a communication system so in order to design the the suitable communication system for that application that is specified in your uh, assignment you need to be able to apply okay uh, apply the proper or the suitable techniques or scheme okay and then uh so for next one, uh, coursework uh, will take up 40% uh, of your total mark for this course. All right, and it consists of a test and assignment as I mentioned previously, and exam is going to be 60%, all right? And um, so these are the references. Okay, should you want to do more reading on your own? Okay, these are the um, official reference book. Um, basically, my lecture material are taken from the first two. Okay, so if you want to do further reading, you can always refer to these two books. Um, by the way, these two books are not that easy to read. Lah. So basically, um, and it also has uh, a lot more depth as compared to uh, what I put in your lecture notes. All right. Okay. Um, then for next one, 
uh, moving on. All right, this is the uh, content of the this course, all right, which I actually summarize it here. So for chapter number one, we are going to go through some uh, principle of communications in general. And then uh, we're going to do some revision. All right, revision on signal processing. So uh, we go, I'm going to go through the signal as well as system. All right. So how the system actually uh, process the signal. Then the actual, the actual cost content will start from here, which is the amplitude modulation. Okay, chapter three, chapter four will be on frequency modulation. Uh, chapter five on pulse modulations. All right, these three are the analog and uh, analog modulation techniques. All right, and then for base and uh, baseband, uh, baseband uh, data transmission, basically this will be digital already. All right, so the, the course basically um, will actually study the analog communication system as well as the digital communication system. All right, so let's start with chapter one. Okay, so in this chapter, we're going to uh, learn these topics. So first of all, we want to know what is communication system as far as uh, this course is concerned. All right, various type of communications uh, available. And also what are the components that we have in the communication system? And then we also uh, learn a bit about the channel. Channel actually is uh, something the the medium. All right, the medium that we actually use to the medium that actually used to uh, convey our information. Then we take a short, a uh, brief look at the electromagnetic uh, spectrum because uh, this is still, we need to uh, know a bit of this in order to understand uh, uh, wireless communication. Then we're going to look at uh, the noise, all right, and the distortion in communication. Then we look at the uh, transmitter and receiver. So the major, the major study that we're going to do in this course basically is uh, the transmitter and the receiver. All right. So we look, we look at system design. Okay, what is our objective in designing a communication system? Then uh, just a, a brief introduction into uh, modulation and demodulation, multiplexing, uh, and then the last. Uh, Topic. So then look at in this uh, chapter is the milestone. All right, have some um, understanding on uh, what what our pioneers have done uh, in developing the communication system that we, that we have today. All right, so first one, uh, let's move into the first one, which is uh, what is communication? Okay. To put it simply, and then I believe everybody knows this, is that the communication basically involves the transfer of information, all right? Transfer of information from one point to another. All right, when you want to communicate with someone, meaning you want to, you want to send a message to someone, right? Uh, that, that involves the transfer of information. So a typical communication system basically consists of uh, five components, all right, which is a source, the transmitter, the channel, the receiver, as well as the destination. Okay, so uh, as far as source of information is concerned, the source of information can be speech, mean it can be audio signal, it can be my voice signal in this case, all right, it can also be music, picture, or any data, all right, in digital form, if you like. And uh, this source of information signal, uh, basically, uh, will actually go through a transducer if necessary. So in this case, uh, my speech or my voice actually need to be uh, converted into electrical signal by a microphone. All right. So in this case, my input transducer is a microphone. So the microphone basically will convert my voice into electrical form. So this electrical form, uh, electrical signal basically is an input signal into the transmitter circuit. So where is this transmitter block? Transmitter block is uh, what I have in my laptop. This is the, I have a transmitter block in my laptop. 
right? And then um, you can if if we are not connected, uh, there is no way what I say here uh, can reach your site. All right, so what we have now basically is a complete communication system. Yeah, so uh, my my the transmitter block in my um, laptop basically will convert the electrical signal that you receive, all right, into a form that is suitable to be transmitted so that it can reach you. All right, uh, you could be in Penang, you could be in Puchong, you know, you could be in Johor, you could be in Sabah. All right, so this, this transmitter is going to be convert my speech all right into a form that is suitable for transmission all right then uh you transmit over the channel so the channel here uh depending on uh what what kind of device you use at the other end all right so the channel can be wired the channel can be wireless so i i have an optical fiber connection in my home so therefore the channel is optical fiber all right uh, but when you reach you, uh, if you are if you are attending this course using your um, Wi-Fi connection or you're using a handphone, that means uh, what you receive here will be a um, a wireless signal, which is an electromagnetic wave. All right. So this signal reach your your side, your receiver. So your receiver could be your handphone, could be your laptop. All right. So what your laptop or your handphone will do will convert the uh, electromagnetic wave into an electrical signal. All right, so my voice now is converted from uh, electromagnetic wave signal into an uh, electrical signal. So this electrical signal will go through the output transducer on your device or on your laptop. So it could be the speaker, it could be your earphone, right? And uh, that will reach you. So you are here. All right. So this is uh, basically what how how uh, the information that uh, I want to transmit reach you from here to here. Okay. Um. So let's move on to the next one. So uh, what are the types of communication uh, that we have nowadays? All right. So the first one, which is the most common one, is the telephone network. Yeah. Then you also have internet. You have internet uh, connection at home. I believe you have. Uh, yeah. Um, then we also have a radio and TV broadcast. Basically, the radio and TV broadcast are the two uh, um, earlier version of a communication system. Um, then we also have mobile communication. We also have uh, Wi-Fi, right? Um, then uh, the last one, which is the satellite and the space communication, all right? So all these type of communication basically uh, use uh, either analog uh, medium or digital, the, the analog or digital, all right? So this communication system. All right, if they use analog, then for analog, we have uh, AM, FM, and PM. Okay, I'll go into this later on. And then for digital, basically, uh, we know what digital is, right? So we actually transfer, transmit the information in, the digital information is in bit form. All right, so this actually uh, we can, uh, can be grouped under, depends on, again, what kind of technology you have on your device. Right, it can be broadband, it can be 3G, 4G, LTE, or even 5G. Okay, so uh, digital communication is actually the dominant technology nowadays, right? So um, I'm going to spend quite some time in here. All right, so this is again um, the, the basic of your um, assignment as well. Yeah. So in order to learn uh, to learn the digital communication well, you need to first know your analog communication because this is the fundamental of all communication system. Okay. So uh, the communication system opponent, I actually explained this uh, already in the uh, previous slides. Uh, anything that I need to add on? Uh? Okay, I think I think they basically explained all already. So I'm gonna move on. 
Okay, uh, the channel. Yeah, let's talk a bit about the channel, the communication channel. All right, the communication channel basically is uh, the medium that we use to transmit our information. All right, so the channel can be wired, can be wireless. All right, um, if my laptop is directly connected uh, to the modem using uh, the Ethernet cable and you are also receiving using your Ethernet cable, then that is a wired, all right, which is uh, the wire is actually your optical fiber, right? But you are actually receiving it through Wi-Fi. That means you have uh, it's a wireless, okay? And it can be a mixture, all right? It can be a mixture as well. So the channel, um, we can have a linear channel. We can have a non-linear channel, all right? Uh, what is linear? What is non-linear? Um, I'm going to talk about linear and non-linear uh, in the second in the chapter two. But basically, here the type of channel that is linear uh, is the mobile radio uh, channel, and non-linear will be your satellite channel. Right? And then for what does linear and non-linear means? Linear and non-linear. Meaning whatever signal I put into the channel, all right, uh, at the uh, transmitter end, the receiver will receive uh, a linear version of the information or the signal I put in. Yeah, but, but for non-linear, the receiver may not receive a exact version. Okay, it could be a non-linear version. Um, then the channel can be time invariant or time varying. Time invariant meaning uh, when I put in the signal at any time, all right, the receiver receives the same information. All right, meaning I put in, I send the information in the morning uh, or I send the same information in at night, all right, the receiver receives the same thing. But time varying means um, the signal may not be the same. It, it may, uh, may be slightly different. So time varying means if I try to send a signal in the morning, all right, uh, the receiver actually receive it uh, well. But if I were to resend it, let's say in the afternoon, um, the receiver may not receive the signal as good as the one that he received in the morning. All right, so that means that uh, this channel actually is time varying, and this is quite common uh, for mobile uh, communication. All right. If, if there are too many people using the uh, service at the same time, then the quality of the uh, signal may be uh, degraded. So that means the, you may not receive the information uh, in the same quality uh, at the time when the, the network is not that busy. Okay, so, um, but for optical fiber, uh, it, the the performance of this channel is always is consistent all right it's consistent so it doesn't it doesn't change with time um okay and then the second point on the communication channel is the capacity of the channel all right the information information carrying capacity of the channel um so what is meant by information carrying capacity so it means uh, how much information can this channel carry, all right? And this is actually proportional to the channel bandwidth, all right? So when we have a bigger bandwidth, now that means uh, more data or more information that the channel can actually carry, all right? So what is bandwidth? What is bandwidth? So to study this course, the understanding on bandwidth is actually uh, very important. Bandwidth, all right, bandwidth is the range of frequency that a channel can transmit with reasonable fidelity. All right, so um, signals, as far as signals is concerned, a real world signal, all right, for example, my, my voice or what I say, uh, consists of a um, many frequency components all right um, so so bandwidth uh, in order to transmit my information uh, what, whatever I say all right 
the channel should be able to to send all right to send all the frequency components in my speech to you all right with reasonable fidelity i mean clear enough for you to hear on your end all right um and then for example uh, for speech speech normally has a bandwidth of five kilohertz all right so that means um that means uh, the the capacity the bandwidth should be able should be at least five kilohertz in order to transmit um, all the frequency components in my voice all right that is the minimum bandwidth required five kilohertz and the as far as uh, channel capacity is concerned this is more in uh, digital form all right so this is the maximum number of bits that can be transmitted per second uh, with a probability of error close to zero probability of error close to zero that means a uh, uh, near zero error okay so that is bandwidth um so all along all along we have been uh working on uh, providing wider bandwidth because wider bandwidth mean uh, i'm able to uh, send more information to you all right so uh at the beginning all right uh copper wire was used this is for wired communication uh, copper wire but copper wire the bandwidth is only one megahertz all right then uh, we move on to use coaxial cable coaxial cable will give us a bandwidth for 100 megahertz uh, microwave signal microwave basically is our um, mobile phone signal or the wi-fi signal is using actually gigahertz all right so we have a bandwidth of gigahertz uh, optical fiber give the widest bandwidth of uh, in the form uh, in the range of uh, terahertz so uh, megahertz is 10 to the power of 6 right giga is 10 to the power of 9 and tera is 10 to the power of 12 all right All right, I don't really like online class. I can't see you, so I can't really know. Don't really know your, your, your response. Okay, so uh, optical communication basically use light as a signal carrier. Okay, so this is light. Light is also a form of electromagnetic wave. Right? Okay, so let's take a brief look at the electromagnetic uh, spectrum. So um, light is also a form of electromagnetic spectrum, uh, electromagnetic wave. So uh, the velocity of light, which is constant, all right, is given by the uh, frequency of that uh, electromagnetic wave multiplied with the uh, wavelength of that electromagnetic wave. So from here, because V is constant, so you can expect that the frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength. Okay, so for radio communication, which is the lowest frequency, all right, is is actually using uh, electromagnetic magnetic wave of uh, frequency in the range of uh, ten to the power of seven to ten to the power of nine. All right. So this is uh, 10 to the power of 9 is what? It's giga, right? All right, this is gigahertz. <clears throat> this is megahertz. <clears throat> All right, and then for uh, microwave signal, it's 10 to the power 11. So this is more of uh, moving towards moving towards tera already, right? Okay, so... Um, that's why uh, even though we have uh, a lot of uh, electromagnetic wave uh, flying or flying around us, we can't see it, all right? Because as far as human is concerned, we can only see light within this range, all right? This is our visible uh, range. So for any signal that is transmitted below uh, or above this range, uh, we can't see them. Okay, so as far as our cost is concerned, um, our signal, if you transmit them wirelessly, 
So it will be in this range uh, from million megahertz to gigahertz range. All right, uh, terahertz is more for optical communication. Um, it's not part of the syllabus of this course, so I won't actually go through it. Okay, what time is it? All right, any questions so far? It's so quiet, I don't even know whether you are with me. Are you still with me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, not falling asleep in bed or something. Huh? Okay, as I say, if you have questions, you need to shout huh? because I, I, when, when I am, oh, okay, too shy. Huh? I don't be shy. Huh? All right, no, no question, I suppose. Uh, let me go through the. Okay. All right. All right. So let me share it again. Uh. Let's, uh, do you need a break or I continue? So far, so far, these are very light material. Uh, so I, I continue. Uh. Okay, um, can see my screen, right? Okay, so this slide show you uh, some everyday uses of radio frequency spectrum. So how we actually make use of the, uh, the electromagnetic uh, spectrum to actually convey information. All right, for radio, radio meaning uh, the FM radio or you know, whatever FM uh, station that you uh, you like to listen to it can be one FM or it's FM you know uh, it's actually use the uh, the lower part of the frequency okay um, what is FM frequency range 88 point 88 megahertz to 100 and something megahertz right so it's down here okay and then for uh, our mobile communication, our cell phone, is actually is actually around here, right? Between uh, somewhere in the range of seven hundred to nine hundred megahertz. And um, what else? Okay, for Wi-Fi. Okay, I I show you the familiar one, uh, the one you're familiar with. Okay, Wi-Fi communication. Wi-Fi actually, if you are, uh, if you are aware. All right, Wi-Fi basically use two frequency, 2.4 megahertz and five, uh, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. All right, so Wi-Fi signal is here, these two. And um, then for uh, yeah, Totec, the RFID um, or the Smart Tech, uh, as you go through the toll, is using a much higher frequency here. Okay, so what does it mean? What does frequency mean? Um, you can see a uh, lower frequency, okay, when the signal is transmitted using lower frequency, the signal actually can go through walls, all right, can go through buildings, all right, so meaning it can also go uh, cover a longer distance. But if you increase the frequency, all right, your signal will have difficulty in going through walls already, all right, it also have a shorter uh, distance uh, of transmission. All right. Um, however, if you look at the price, the cost, all right, uh, lower frequency actually costs uh, a lot higher than a uh, higher frequency. If you transmit signal with higher frequency, you pay, you actually pay less, all right, as compared to a uh, lower frequency uh, zone. But uh, of course, you have the problem of your signal can only travel uh, over short distance. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I suppose you experience that, yeah. If you try to connect, uh, if you try to connect your handphone to a five gigahertz, uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, channel, all right, you, you find that uh, even though your, your download speed, uh, is actually a lot faster as compared to 4.4 gigahertz, but uh, if you actually go, let's say, 
a bit further from where your router is, you can see that you actually uh, experience some drop in your download speed. Okay, it can go uh, worse than your two two point four gigahertz channel. That's because uh, the five gigahertz channel actually have difficulty going through walls. Yeah, and also traveling long distance. Um, so okay, that's a bit. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Oops, where I am? Why am I uh, Um, okay, so noise. Let's move on to noise and distortion in communication. So as far as uh, communication is concerned, all right, um, they are always noise uh, present in the channel, so in the medium of communication. Meaning uh, when I, I talk to you, all right, any, any signal or any voices that, that is not meant, uh, it's not what I say, uh, are actually noises. Uh, all right, so they are actually called uh, unwanted Okay, unwanted signal or in, in our case of electromagnetic wave, uh, these are unwanted random wave. Okay, noise are random uh, in nature. So uh, noise actually refers to any unwanted wave that disturb our communication. Okay, or anything that actually change our, our signal. So these are uh, noises. Um, so that, that's why I say uh, the noise actually will contaminate our signal. It actually vary our, it vary in the sense that it change the uh, waveform of our signal, yeah? Um, when you travel along the channel. So uh, noises come from two, uh, two sources, two ex, uh, they can be external noise, it can be uh, internal noise, all right? So external noise are actually uh, noise from uh, nearby channel. Uh, human-made noise or any natural noise such as atmos atmospheric noise and galactic noise all right and atmospheric noise are noise that in the atmosphere so it could be you know caused by rain or caused by um what else what else we have in the atmosphere haze you know and so on okay and then for so external noise is some some noise that we can't control much yeah because uh it's, it's uh random and then it's um, irregular, it could be time bearing in nature. But for internal noise, it's something uh, I think we can control, but uh, we cannot minimize. Uh, we can minimize, but we cannot get rid of it. So internal noise are actually noise that come from the, uh, the electronic devices. Yeah. So as we know, the com our, our communication uh, device like handphone or laptop are made from electronic devices, right? Are actually electronic system by itself. So uh, um, when, you, when you use electronic devices, in fact, any device, yeah, um, they are noise uh, that are related to it, right? So uh, as far as electronic uh, devices is concerned, you actually have a short noise, all right? You also have a thermal noise as well as white noise, right? You learn about this, right? When you actually learn about the uh, um, the electronic devices itself, so this noise actually will pose limitation on the performance of our communication system. All right, and uh, of course, uh, you you uh, we should actually uh, in our design we should actually minimize it, uh, all right, but we cannot actually zero it. Um, but what we can do is um, we can actually uh, play around with our signal power. All right. So basically how we measure the performance of our communication system is by using a signal to noise ratio. So signal power over noise power. All right. If our signal power is high enough, then the noise wouldn't uh, be able to affect our signal too much. However, there is also limitation on the amount of signal power that we can transmit. Yeah, so there are regulations. So you can't really say, oh, I want to boost my signal power to the maximum in order to get a good SNR. Uh, you can't do that in uh, in electronic communication. Yeah, uh, you can do that uh, in 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 real life, lah. I mean, you can do that uh, if you actually talk to your friend. All right. If you are, let's say you're eating in a restaurant, a restaurant is very noisy. 
So, so the noise power, the noise level is very high. So if you want to uh, make sure your friend can hear you, you want to hear each other's conversation, you have to talk louder. So meaning you actually boost your signal power. Okay, mm, but uh, as far as communication system is concerned, uh, there's limitation on how much you can boost your signal power. Yeah. Um, so uh, as far as signal and uh, noise is concerned, uh, both type of signal are actually stationary and also have a zero mean Gaussian distribution. So in this course, we're going to make use of a Gaussian distribution uh, call, uh, a yeah. lot. Nah. So um, as far as this course is concerned, uh, we're going to only consider one type of noise. Uh, this is a common noise, which is the additive white Gaussian noise. All right, in short, uh, AWGN. So there is noise. Uh, what about distortion? All right, distortion actually come from the channel itself. Uh, all right, so um, so channel actually, uh, if you try to transmit uh, a signal, uh, any signal that consists of uh, various frequency components, the channel will actually act as a filter. All right, you know what is a filter, right? So a filter basically will uh, attenuate, meaning it will reduce the uh, strength of a certain signal and uh, it may also block certain frequency isn't it so you learn the filter right uh, okay let's 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 draw how a filter look like oops yeah Okay, how does the filter look like? How does the frequency response of a filter look like? So let's say you have a filter and the frequency response curve is normally like this. Like let's say I have a bandpass filter. This is frequency. All right, this is uh, maybe it's your gain or so on. All right, so this filter will only pass signal from uh, this frequency to this frequency. Right, so a channel, a channel may only transmit a signal with frequency from F1 to F2. So if you trans, if you try to transmit a signal that is lower than F1, no, you won't allow it to pass. You will try to transmit any signal higher than F2, also the signal will not go through. All right, and here also, uh, you attenuate right any frequency between F1 and F3. All right, the signal when you uh, go through that channel. Uh, what you reach the receiver, uh, the uh, the strength of the uh, of that frequency of the that frequency when you reach the receiver it will be lowered. All right, so you can see the relative proportion of the strength in the uh, signal frequency actually will change by the channel. Will be changed by the channel when the, actually the signal travel through the channel. Okay, so a very typical example is, uh, let's say what, what I want to transmit is a digital signal. All right, this is a digital signal over here, right? Yeah. So um, what will happen is uh, if I try to transmit this digital signal over a channel, um, you can see that uh, the nature of a digital signal is we have some very quick transition here from low to high, all right? So this quick transition basically has a very high frequency component. All right, in order to change so fast, meaning the frequency is very high. All right, so um, the channel may not be able to may not be able to react, react that fast. All right, the channel may not be able to react that fast, and this is very typical when you use wire or cable. You know. And uh, therefore, the signal will actually uh, react slowly in this case. So when you react slower, it kind of distorts your waveform already. So what actually go through the channel is no more the you know ideal square wave version of your digital signal. Okay, it actually go it will change to more sine wave like. 
So uh, this actually, what is this actually is uh, what we call distortion. We actually distort, we change the signal waveform, all right, the waveform of the signal that we transmit. And uh, another distortion that may happen is actually phase shift. Okay, phase shift. Um, basically, the channel again it responds differently to different frequency. All right, so that means uh, signal of different frequency component uh, might be delayed at different time. So that is phase shift. So that will actually again distort our signal. All right. And as far as we are concerned, uh, when we design our communication system, we have to make sure that this is something we can't do on uh, the channel will do this, right? Uh, when we design our communication system, uh, we need to make sure that the receiver can actually recover the actual uh, information that we send at the transmitter. So this is a receiver side. Okay, this is a transmitter side. Okay, the channel will actually distort your signal, will actually modify your signal a bit. But you have to make sure uh, at the receiver, you have to design a system that can recover it. Okay, um, that is the, um, the whole idea of this course. Yeah. Right, so um, let's move on to the next one. So again, um, transmitter. We talked about transmitter um, in short previously. So that's a little bit of a recap. Transmitter, what does transmitter do? Transmitter actually modify our message, all right, into a form that is suitable for transmission over the channel. So uh, how the transmitter modify? Actually, it depends on what kind of channel you want to use to transmit, all right? And uh, it also depends on what kind of message you want to transmit. Yeah. So uh, the, the modification actually involves uh, modulation. We call it modulation. All right. And uh, what does modulation do? Modulation actually moves the signal that we want to transmit to a high frequency carrier. Okay. It uses a carrier to carry our signal. Real life signal are all low frequency signal. All right. And low frequency signal, like my speech, cannot go beyond uh, the distance of my house. All right. So in order for my voice to reach you, uh, I have to convert my signal to a high, so that uh, it can be carried by a high frequency carrier and then reach your side. So um, as far as uh, modulation is concerned, we have analog and we have digital. All right, so again, these are the three uh, major uh, analog modulation technique, and these are the three uh, digital modulation technique. AM, FM, PM for analog, and ASK, FSK, and PSK for uh, digital. And what about receiver? So because at transmitter, we actually modify our message already, right? So at receiver, the receiver basically need to undo the modification. All right, it need to recreate the original message. So this is what the receiver do. And the process that uh, of undoing the uh, origin or uh, the changes basically is called the demodulation process. All right. So it actually undo the changes and then recreate the original message. So this is the more demodulation process. However, uh, because the channel, right, the channel will actually introduce noise and distortion to our message. So your recovery may not be exact. So what you receive at your end may not be the exact copy of what I transmit here. Okay, uh, what it means is uh, um, whatever you hear on your side, all right, um, may not be exactly what I say on this side. <laughs> It's kind of scary, is it? But don't worry, the content is the same. All right. So as far as uh, as far as our communication is concerned, I think the frequency will be slightly different. All right. The frequency component uh, will be slightly different, meaning the voice that you hear on your side uh, may not be the same as the voice that uh, someone were to hear uh, in the same room as uh, where I am now. Okay. Um. Uh, that is because we have a good communication system. All right, we have a good communication system here. 
um, you have a bad communication system, then uh, you may have, uh, you may hear my voice in, uh, and it's broken, All right? Uh, broken because it's digital. So um, if you hear my, my voice being broken uh, here and there, um, then that means we have a bad, uh, bad line there or bad communication system, which is normally the problem with the channel. Um, okay. Um, then um, design. So okay, we whenever we talk about uh, design of uh, communication system, meaning we have to design a transmitter and the receiver. All right, and then based on the type of channel that we want to use. Uh. So when we design analog communication system, uh, conceptually it's actually very simple. All right, later on you go through it. Uh, for digital communication, um, which is more commonly used nowadays because it's more efficient and reliable, uh, the design is a bit more sophisticated. Uh. Okay, um, but uh, regardless of uh, which type of uh, communication system you need to design, um, basically we follow the the simple block diagram. Okay, meaning we have a signal going into a modulation circuit that actually convert our, our signal into a form that is suitable, suitable for transmission. All right, and then it being transmitted, then they go through the channel, depending on what channel you use, wired or wireless. All right, if wired, do you want to use optical fiber or do you want to use uh, cable? All right, then uh, when you reach uh, the receiver end, then you need to recover the signal here. All right, with the demodulation circuit. And then the signal actually reach the receiver side or the destination. Okay, so um, when we design, what do we need to consider? Okay. It's 12 o'clock now. Shall we take a short break? Anybody need a break? No? No? No, no, I move on. Yeah. Very quiet, are you? Um, okay, so uh, let's move on to objective of system design. So when we design a communication system, uh, what are our objective? Um, so before we look at our objective, we need to identify our resources, what we have in our communication system, what can we use, all right? So the two primary resources that we have, uh, one is the power, the other one is the bandwidth, all right? Okay, how much power, how much power can we use to transmit our signal, all right? And then for nowadays, you have to, if you can, you make sure your power is, the use you use is green and also efficient, you make efficient use of your power, all right? Efficient use meaning uh, use as little power as possible to to achieve the same um, uh, signal to noise ratio. Uh, second one is the channel bandwidth. All right, the second the resources is the channel bandwidth. All right, um, as as we talked about previously, is uh, if we have bigger bandwidth or wider bandwidth, meaning we can transmit more information. All right. Ideally, everybody want to transmit more information if possible, isn't it? Um, however, bandwidth is very, very expensive. All right, bandwidth is very, very costly. So uh, our service provider, right, be it Maxis or, or what, Cellcom or yeah, DG, uh, for them to, to, to run the business, to provide uh, service to you, they need to buy bandwidth. They need to purchase bandwidth, all right? So bandwidth is actually very, very expensive. Uh, and then uh, each of these service providers, they have very limited bandwidth. All right, then how do they serve so many customers? So they have to make very efficient use of the bandwidth. All right, so uh, if you can transmit the same amount of information using less bandwidth, then it's better. All right, so in your design, you need to look at into this, how you make use of these two uh, resources. Um, but uh, in it depends on the application where it's used. Yeah, sometimes when your power is limited, 
All right. Uh, in the case of uh, deep space communication, uh, wireless channel and satellite channel. Wireless channel meaning if you carry your handphone, your handphone runs on battery. Your power is limited. All right. So you cannot uh, transmit a uh, signal from your handphone using very high power or else uh, your battery may not last you for one hour. All right. So uh, you, you have to consider this. And uh, bandwidth, bandwidth limited, all right, bandwidth limited, again, uh, um, this is where you cannot use, you cannot transmit everything you want to transmit at, at very high speed. So again, um, the, you have limitation again on your Wi-Fi channel, on your telephone channel. So these are all limited as well. All right. So again, you have to look at uh, which one is uh, more important. But in, in communication system design, basically, you you have these two limitations all right so um so what is the objective all right objectives of a uh, communication system design is to make sure all right make sure that the message that we want to send is delivered both efficiently and reliably all right and uh, this is also uh, to do this uh, again you are subjected to certain design constraint constraint in the terms of power in the terms of bandwidth uh, and then the last thing is the cost your boss will tell you hey uh, too expensive huh? give me something cheap, uh, cheaper you know more economical so again uh, you have these three limitation uh, so basically that's what the that's what the engineer do lah. Huh? So you have to make sure you um, you design a system that is uh, efficient and reliable in terms of power as far as communication is the, is the concerned, power, bandwidth, as well as cost. Yeah. And um, okay, we talk about uh, efficient uh, delivery, efficient delivery of the message. So what is efficiency? Efficiency is measured by the amount of message sent. All right, per unit power, per unit time, as well as unit bandwidth. All right, how much message can we send by using one watt of power? How much message can we send by using by in one second? How much message can we send in one hertz of bandwidth? Okay, so all these are the measurement of your efficiency. And reliability, reliability we measured in terms of signal to noise ratio. This is for uh, analog communication. And for digital communication, we measure the uh, reliability in probability of error. Right. So um, how likely is this uh, your, your system will, will give you a message that consists of error? Right. So again, uh, these are the two measurements um so the design of communication this is always a trade-off between the snr and the bandwidth yeah as i mentioned previously so um sometimes you have a limitation on the bandwidth you boost your improve your snr all right signal to noise ratio and sometimes you have a limitation on your signal power signal to noise ratio you may have to choose a modulation system that make better use of your bandwidth of the channel. So again, uh, this is uh, always a trade-off. Yeah. Um, so this this is uh, something that uh, you need to go through. All right, and this will be part of your work in your assignment. Okay. So when you do your system design. You have to you you have to assess. Uh, you have to actually measure you know, how good is my system all right okay let's take a short break here lah. i know you're too shy to ask for a break all right you're too shy to ask for a break so let me call for a break here all right